grand opening, grand closing. Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. It's your only friend, these YouTube streets, Portal Rock 77. And I'm back with another video. Um, originally, I was going to make an MPD video, but I think this is a more enjoyable topic. So, Destin Legary um, hosted Colt Eastwood, and they were talking about various topics on their most recent live um, podcast. Um, I want to cover some of their points, um, which I think are incorrect. Um, before we get to that, I want to preface it with this. Historically, I will say this. I think Xbox content creators know how to provide entertaining products, but they really suck at critical analysis of things. They're terrible at it. And sometimes I'll be honest, critical analysis doesn't provide the metrics as compared to entertaining conversation. Sometimes the lies is better than the truth. Sometimes false narrative is better than the truth or sometimes misconstruing things is better than the truth, right? Because those things relate to the emotional aspects of the community of what people want to hear versus what you need. Some people prefer what they want versus what they actually need, right? Um, and I'm sorry, these two do a good job of giving what people want versus telling them what they need to hear. We've seen it before, right? Um, people wanted to hear Xbox Series X was going to be the world's most powerful console and that the majority of games will run better flat out. Xbox community wanted to hear that. Xbox wanted to hear that PlayStation 5 is going to have issues and that it will primarily be a 1440p 30 frames per second platform, maybe 4K 30, you know, if possible, right? Xbox community wanted to hear that. They wanted to hear background noise or, oh, I heard rumors that developers are having issues with PlayStation 5 hardware. While on Xbox, they are breezing through it and that 4K 60 will be the standard output. That's what they wanted to hear. They wanted to hear that with the introduction of Series S, there will be no issues in game development. Software scales easily, just like PC. Therefore, the Series S is the Series X, but at 1080p and 1440p. That's it. They wanted to hear that. They wanted to hear that because of the introduction of Series S, that the price value and offering of a console, a next generation console for only $300, would have a bigger attraction of gamers, larger market share, because you will have millions of gamers who are looking forward more to the value proposition, to the effective cost. Parents buy an effective cost of console hardware versus a $500 machine, and that will bridge the gap in market share. Gamers wanted to hear that. With the proposition combined with Game Pass, with a library of 400 plus games, superior backwards compatibility, and auto improvements to many of the games. These are attractive offerings to where you can offer a $300 platform on day one. And on that day, there is an overwhelming of library of games that will be modernized through auto um, features such as auto HDR, boost in FPS, maybe boost in graphics at the fingertips of gamers. And you get all that day one and that would help xbox and console hardware reach better market share more improved mind share xbox community wanted to hear that with the proposition of all these combined xbox consoles will be in a better position to be more competitive and when the generation ends that's the the, the dust and finger wave will ultimately have an even out ecosystem and balance of Xbox hardware sales and mindshare and market share with PlayStation 5 mindshare market share, and they will be on the same level, pretty much almost similar to the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 generation. Xbox gamers wanted to hear that. That's what they wanted to hear because that's what they're important. That's what feels good. 
That's all what this has been about. Not about the facts and what you need to know, you know, because the fact is you can't launch a brand new console hardware with no killer games. Even if it's um, cross-gen, you got to provide something new. But you didn't want to hear that, you know. The fact that analysts were telling you PlayStation was selling out to the point where there's nothing left to sell. You all didn't want to hear that. That Microsoft is fumbling some of their biggest IPs that they own. They fumbled Halo. They're fumbling Forza. They're just constantly fumbling. You didn't want to hear that. That Microsoft is touting ecosystem, yet they release exclusives on PC that you can't play on your Xbox console, thus disrupting the term ecosystem. You didn't want to hear that either. So much wrong that indicates that this whole Xbox console thing is not really working out from the game sales reports, from reports of majority of the market share of third-party games being bought on PlayStation and not on Xbox. Just constant information flowing quarter after quarter and quarterly results coming in and and you're showing the hardware negative revenue the software is not making it y'all didn't want to hear that so in my opinion when you hear information from xbox content creators they don't give you what you need they don't tell you the information of what you need based on facts based on reality and forming those this conversation discussions on that they simply tell you what you do want to hear because that's what you're willing to listen to. You're willing to listen to what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear. And if you don't want to hear facts and reality and data that leads to a factual conclusion, then you're going to be led astray. And I think these guys know very well that the Xbox community don't want truth. You don't want facts. You want to hear what you want to hear because it feels good. And they're going to keep doing it. So I want to address some of this point because on this channel, you're going to get what you need. If you want to walk away, fine, walk away. But remember, it was this channel that told you last year that you're going third party. And there's other channels too. I don't want to take solo credit. Shout out to King Thrash and many others that warned you. Right? I even put Tim Stewart's conversation on this channel. These guys didn't do that. I did it live for you to hear yourself because I'm trying to give you what you need so you can listen to yourself. And hey, if you didn't want to listen to it and you don't like this channel because you're tired of getting the truth and I'm not giving you what you need to emotionally feel good, then yo, you might as well just leave because I will never give you what feels good. You're going to get truth, period. Because you can actually do something. You can actually make better decisions for yourself with truth. You can't make a good decision based on yourself with truth. Now, recently, you're talking people are talking about, oh man, I should have never bought an Xbox. Why did this? Why did that? It's because you didn't listen to the truth. You only wanted what you wanted to hear because it felt good. And now, guess what? None of that was true. And now you're stuck wondering, what the hell? You should have pushed for truth, for facts, for true analysis that comes to a conclusion. And then once you get that conclusion, you can use that factual conclusion to make the decision for yourself. I'm going to tell you right now, and this is all the PlayStation, whatever. Okay. And this is for me. I rock with PlayStation, but that's because PlayStation gives me what I want out of it. The day PlayStation stops giving me what I want out of it, I'm moving on. I'm not going to stay hoping PlayStation figures something out when they stop doing what I want them to do. When they're not providing the products that I want, or if they make a decision, let's say such as PC day and date, and now that other platform that gets all the games day and date is just superior, then I'm just going to move on to the superior platform because I'm still getting the games just in a better way and all these better things. You always have to make a decision based on facts, based on reality, and then you use that stuff, combine it, and then you say, all right, in this new dynamic, what is best for me? If you still stay on console, that's perfectly fine, but at least you made that decision in conversation or that choice on truth. Just make your decisions based on truth. That's it. 
and you'll be fine. You won't stress out on none of this stuff. But a lot of mental gymnastics are happening because more conversations are being done based on how we feel or to appease feelings than simply just say, hey, this is the facts. This is the reality. This is what's happening. Here you go. Make your decision on what you want to do. And that's it. But anyway, we're going to start right here. Um, we're not going to cover the video. It's like 42 minutes. I'm not going to cover all 42 minutes. I'm only covering certain topics, and that's it. If you want to see the full scope of the video and all the other topics, you have to go to Destin Liguri's channel, and please watch it there. I'm not the type... Uh, to try to show the entire, I don't think that's right. I know people say, well, it's fair use, whatever. I don't know. I have this thing about showing the entire show on my channel or whatever. I like to pick bits and pieces and then that's it. If you want to see the whole thing, you need to go to the creator's contents channel. That's the right thing to do. I will even link this specific video into the description panel because it's only right. But I am only talking about certain topics, certain picks and stuff like that that I disagree with. The other stuff uh, is not really... Something to disagree with. It's just general outlook, which is fine, whatever. But I think these guys are still making the same mistake because in my opinion, they are still grounded in, in one final, how would you say, result. They're grounded into trying to achieve a specific result. And that specific of result is how can we make Xbox look good when they're making themselves look bad? And I have a feeling that's, that's the flaw. That is the absolute flaw in these Xbox conversation content creators. It's always grounded in ultimately, what can we say and do? How can we steer the conversation in ultimately Xbox looking like the good guy? And maybe the good guy's the wrong term. More like, they look like they made the good decision. That's, that's better. That's a better way to describe it. How can we steer this to show the community Xbox made the right decision? And they will always be grounded in that. And that's why they're more often not, they're always wrong. They tried to use power to make Xbox look good, bismally failed. They try to use Game Pass to make Xbox look good, failed, right? What else? It, it, it's always grounded on how can we make Xbox look good and it just keeps failing, you know? I think Xbox content creators, you have to look at this like alcoholism. When you have a friend who's an alcoholic, unless that friend admits they're an alcoholic, they will never be cured of that disease. The first step is recognizing alcoholism is the problem. Start there. And you guys are like that alcoholic. You don't want to accept console strategy for Xbox is a failed, completely failed strategy. You haven't accepted that. You have not accepted for Xbox, it is 100% failed strategy. It is not a failed strategy for PlayStation. Absolutely not. Okay? There's a difference between trying to do more and trying to re-strategize based on a failed strategy. Two different parameters. Absolutely two different parameters. You understand what I'm saying? Xbox is a failed strategy for, as a console, which comes with a lot of things. And it is not strictly first-party titles. It's how many subscribers you get on your console how many third-party sales you get on your console how much of the money transactions from these third-party games like fortnite apex is actually generated on your console these are all revenue streams that the console bring and if you generally are not doing good in third-party sales which again we see factual data majority of third-party games are sold on playstation we've seen data that majority of the free to play games between xbox and playstation is played on playstation that means playstation from the console is getting the lion's shares of that 30 percent in money transactions from fortnite apex legends call of duty all this stuff xbox is not so when you look at all this stuff also another thing we got data that shows subscriptions services have flattened so if you're, and even Phil Spencer said that Game Pass subscribers has been going more on PC than their own console. Again, these are the things the console's supposed to do. It's supposed to bring subscription revenue and increase with console sales. It's supposed to bring money transaction revenue, that 30% cut and increase. It's supposed to bring more third-party sales. That's what the console does. And that is worth much more than first-party sales. 
because the enormous amount of third party games content and out there will always dwarf first party always the combined might of subscriptions money transactions and third party sales outweigh rev revenue outweigh first party there is no amount of first party you can do on an xbox or playstation okay now you can argue nintendo did the opposite but that's because nintendo forsaken third party nintendo said we're done catering to the third party industry it is not in our best interest because catering to the third party industry means you have to fight playstation for that third party and nintendo realized you're not going to be playstation getting these third party deals because nintendo already knew playstation's doing you know these tactics of getting third party exclusives because they before xbox nintendo was going through it so Nintendo was already the first victim. Nintendo Sega was already the first victim of this third party strategy. So they know it all too well. All too well. So Nintendo's like, you know what? How can we protect ourselves from being damaged by not getting these third party games on Nintendo? Oh, we got that strategy. Raise the middle finger to the third party industry. We're done with you. We're not focused on third party games no more. You're good, PlayStation. Take it all. We don't give a damn. We're going to reinforce our own vision, and we're just going to strictly build a Nintendo identity. We're going to... Nintendo created an identity that said, you buy Nintendo for Nintendo. And that's what they went, and it worked for them. Now, some of us moved on from Nintendo because we don't like that strategy, but they gained a whole new subscriber base, a whole new fan base, and that's it. They're not worried about third party no more. And they never will be. They will never make a platform with third party in mind they're done with that whatever they do is strictly on them and that's it okay they realize that's the issue now let's go because i already talked <laughs> like 16 minutes on just me but anyway let's go with what these guys are saying all right let's start right here so i got timestamps. not a lot but like i said it's not gonna be the whole video Go watch it if you want to see the rest of the conversations. They talk about other stuff like does hardware really matter or power really matter. But I wasn't interested in discussing that. But anyway, here we go. I, I suppose we should start there. So how are you feeling about all these games going multi -plat? Um, I mean, it, it bothers me in the first reaction. Of course, I know I'm not losing anything, but it's really obvious that the games industry is heading in a different direction where what I call the 2010s industry model no longer really works, especially seeing like the past big AAA games get trounced by AA games that cost, you know, less or a quarter of the budget and they're doing really well and players are still having like the same amount of fun or even more. So this is why I have a problem with the first Colt. So Colt, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you something about Colt that I learned seeing his content creator. He is the type of guy that will tell you when the when your house is on fire he's gonna tell you bro you gotta call the fire department and then after your buildings burn down make sure you call the insurance they'll help you repair and you look at him like yeah no shit sherlock thanks for the thanks for the advice after the fact but when he's in the kitchen and he sees the frying pan with a little bit too much oil and the flame is too much high he can't perceive that's a problem he doesn't see that as a problem like nothing He'll just walk away. Or if he walks into the kitchen, nobody's there. Fire pan is all the way blasted. High heat. Oil is filled to the brim. Way too much oil. He, he'll just walk out the kitchen and just continue the conversation. He will not tell people, wait a minute. I foresee a problem. He only talks about the problem after it's already too late. Again, the house is burned down. Everybody's out. Now he wants to put in his two cents. Yeah, you know, you get a fire department, call the fire department so they could put the fire out. And then with insurance, like, like, what are we talking about here, bro? Like, if you, you see what I'm saying? If he really knew how the industry is headed, then why was he so resistant when we brought up last year what Tim Stewart said, saying they're bringing more games to PlayStation and Nintendo, that they, they no longer see PlayStation and Nintendo as competitors. Why was he so resistant to that then? Why did you not address the frying pan if, if, if you had so much foresight? I, I need to know that. You know what I'm saying? And what's funny is he was on Gaz's podcast telling me that no one takes my word serious. You do realize, Colt, 
that my word, pretty much all the major points you made and I made, I came out right. I'm the one that came out about that whole power thing. It's not happening this gen. Oh, look at that. The whole Xbox selling more. Yeah, that wasn't happening. Another W for me. Xbox going third party last year based on Tim Stewart's words, Satya's words. Oh, look at that. I was right again. Wow. Wow. Ain't that something, you know? So you know where the industry is going, yet you can see the very platform that you represent and you had no idea what was coming, even though the top figureheads literally said it. And you know what's crazy? This is what's crazy, Cole. Hi-Fi Rush is launching in March. Sea of Thieves is launching in April. Even I didn't predict those games was coming that soon. I knew something was happening, but I'm thinking like late 2024, early 2025, you know, I was thinking, all right, they're going to talk about it late 2024 and then execute 2025. Hell no. That shit's coming out next month. They had it planned out with Nintendo's direct. Nintendo had a direct partner direct. And the games were there. Do you know what that means, Cole? Here, if you didn't figure it out, here, let me tell you what that means. That means they, this plan was already in motion last year. This plan was already in motion before Tim Stewart even said it in November. We're talking potentially May of 2023. June, July, all this stuff was being worked out. The logistics, the limited run physical editions, Going on Nintendo's Direct Live to talk about it. Targeting the release date. When to launch the game physically in stores by March and all this stuff. You don't do this on January 2nd. They didn't go pop. Yeah, happy new year. You know what? I think we should put our games on Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, let's get that ready right now. And bam, March. Have it ready. Nah, son. This was already done before we even had Tim Stewart say anything. And while you were making videos, right, literally, uh, it's only ABK and all this stuff, Microsoft was already coordinating with Nintendo and PlayStation on the marketing strategy, getting the date right of when these games are going to launch, planning the physical editions, the marketing stuff and all that. This was already happening before Tim Stewart. So how does that make you feel? How does it make you feel that while you were making videos reassuring that this is not happening, Microsoft was on the phone with Nintendo? How does it make you feel Microsoft was video conferencing with PlayStation? While you're making videos content, damage controlling, this is only Xbox, these PlayStation fanboys don't know what they're doing, Microsoft figureheads was literally talking with PlayStation, Nintendo, strategizing all this, and announcing it on Nintendo's Direct. While you out there putting your face, this face that we see right now, talking the opposite. So you had this face on the internet, reassuring your community, while the guys in Redmond were, were in teams meetings with Nintendo's public, publicists and, and publishing to market all this. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Absolutely insane. Been um, <laughs> the five stages of grief where we're like, is this really happening? And then um, I've been hearing about this for about a month. So you've been hearing about it for a month. So what is it? February? This You did this podcast a couple of days ago. So you've been hearing about it in January. But this plan was already in motion. I, I have to say at least by the summer, summer 2023. So you are like six, seven months off the target. That's how far behind you are. They were already talking with Nintendo and PlayStation pff, way before Tim Stewart said anything. This thing was already a wrap. Crazy, bro. How, how far behind and they left you in the dark. All the while, this is what I want you to do, Cole. Go to your library. Destin, you too. Go to your library. Go to your videos on YouTube. Go back to, let's say, January. Start with January. Look at the videos and lives, podcasts you made in January and see how many content you created based off thinking Xbox exclusives, how the exclusives are going to generate 
you know, Mindshare. Think of all that stuff. Think of all the content you made on Activision Blizzard and Bethesda, the exclusives, all these big exclusives going to make Xbox big and stuff like that. And you're making all this content. You both making this content, predictions, all this stuff. All the while, <laughs> Microsoft's on the phone with PlayStation while you guys are making these videos. They're on the phone. They're on Teams meetings. Because this is not something you could do in two weeks. No way. Pour in it and have it ready by March? Think about it. Look at your channel and look at all the stuff you thought. And while you're doing this uploading videos, Microsoft was already coordinating with PlayStation and Nintendo. <laughs> wow, bro. This shit's wild. I immediately went through five stages of grief in one phone call with a close friend. And I, I said, look, I could sell you on Xbox should put everything or whatever they want on other platforms as long as they launch an Xbox and Game Pass first and then come later. And um, that's, that's kind of how I. When I heard that line, I'm like, he admitted it. You heard him when he says, I can sell you on everything, come to Game Pass, you know, um, put down everything just as long as you have a console and Game Pass. Wow. He literally admitted he sells for the corporation, which is fine because he probably makes money. He makes money on his channel. He got connections with Microsoft. So monetarily, it's very lucrative. So I so I could give Cole a pass, absolute pass, because at least he's making money off the damn thing, right? Probably a lot, gets a lot of stuff, got a lot of connections. He's a Microsoft employee at this point, you could say. So I'm not going to hate on him. He's a he's, he's Microsoft employee and doing that thing, right? But to the community, the fact that you don't recognize that, that's, you know what? That's a shame on you. It's not a shame on him. It's a shame on you. You don't see it. He literally told you, I could sell some shit, but can you at least do this? <laughs> Yo, it's wild. I felt like, I hope so. But um, if they start figuring out a lot of big games to launch simultaneously, and I think fans are going to continue to really get irked about what they've known for 40 years. I, well, what did they launch simultaneously with, uh, with the uh, PlayStation and switch? Nothing, uh, not nothing much yet. Nothing. Simultaneous. Not much. Just some stuff that was contractual. And then of course, every Minecraft game and, and call of duty game, um, will probably be there. Uh, I think there'd be a, some actors and games, but now like we're really incredulous if Bethesda games will launch, exclusive to xbox and i also think xbox isn't going to use the dreaded exclusive word much anymore man you guys are you remember like i said earlier they are still bent on the result of how can we make xbox look good in this scenario they are so zoned in and focused on that destin cold let that shit well cold just let that shit go you are holding yourselves back okay there's going to be games day and date on playstation nintendo the only thing stopping Day and date, I'll be honest, is resource management. You know, Bethesda, Activision, they probably have the capability to do day and date because they're built for that mechanism. That's what they do. Microsoft literally bought multi-plat day and date developing machines. That's who they are. Okay. While let's say maybe Obsidian, 343, Coalition, maybe not so much. Playground, not so much. Right? Because they're not built to be day and date multi studios, right? They're not big enough. And maybe Microsoft doesn't want to invest more money for them to become that big to be able to do that. So those guys, A, focus on Game Pass supported platforms, you know, Xbox devices, PC. And once you're done, then start the port process. That's really how that's going to play out. Really capability and, and, and resources. It's If you guys think that the decision is about selling consoles, you, you guys lost the plot. Listen, the whole idea of Microsoft trying to use exclusive to sell consoles is over. From this point forward, there's only one exclusive that will sell Xbox consoles, only one, and that's Game Pass. That's your exclusive. If you want an Xbox console, it's because of Game Pass, because you already heard it. They're already starting the narrative. Xbox consoles will be the only console where you have access to Game Pass. And they're going to double down on that. They're going to triple down on that. And next gen, when they launch their new consoles, it's going to be all about 
Game Pass being what sells consoles. It will not be about exclusive games. Xbox will not be the home to play exclusive games. You already saw that. Go back to the Xbox podcast when they announced this. They have it, you know, timestamp. Go to the part, what is Xbox today? They literally tell you what Xbox today. And they do not mention that it is the place to play the biggest exclusives. Sorry. It's all about Game Pass. So, prepare to see some games called Day and Date on PlayStation. Now, again, and the beauty of part about that is, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll play on PlayStation. Okay, so pay $70. Pay $70 on all Xbox first party games. Or you gain access to all of that without paying $70 because of Game Pass. Right? You can't really hurt Microsoft and threaten them with a good time. Oh, Microsoft, I'm done with you. I'm going to get a PlayStation and I'm going to throw $70 your way. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you. I'm not going to hurt them. You converted yourself from Game Pass to now paying $70 across all their titles. You're not hurting them, right? Because they're doing this shift because just simply having a console with all the other revenue streams is not really working for them. Yeah, I, I think we're in a in a new space for sure where PlayStation's talking about <clears throat> closer to day and date with PC, Xbox is talking. Oh, they are? Uh, can you show me a reference, Destin, where they said that? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't the Q&A because I literally listened to the entire Q&A. You guys made that. What? Hey, Destin, Cole, help me out with this. The English language and communication is a certain thing. You guys, when when Tim Stewart Satya said direct words, you altered it, even though they said it. But with PlayStation, words they never said, you're saying they said, like, I don't understand how this conversation communication works for you guys. The things that are directly, directly communicated, you ignore and create something. And then the stuff that's not directly communicated, you guys had. Now, I'm not saying that a strategy of day and day is not on the table. I'm not arguing that at all. But what I am arguing is they never actually discussed the strategy of how they're going to move forward. They never said day and day to PC or whatever. They never used those terms or whatever. Those things were never thought. You guys are adding seasoning to a dish that was that that wasn't part of the ingredient list. But then when it comes to Xbox, when we had the ingredient list, you take away the seasonings. It's it's just weird how you guys communicate and listen. I have a feeling you guys didn't even listen to the QA broadcast. Never listen, listen. If you guys did not listen to the QA broadcast yourself, I don't know what to tell you. You're already on the wrong foot. Do the research and listen to it yourself so you can actually form, again, you can actually form an opinion based on what people need to hear and not what they want to hear. Talking about how they want to have more games available on other platforms a little bit after launch. And it felt like Matt Booty was setting us up, setting our expectations up where he's like, Hey, yeah, just so you know, the game's the biggest thing now. It's not necessarily the console. And I do think we are moving past the generation of consoles, and we're currently in uh, a space where the game is the most important thing. because the Oh, so, so first-party games are the most important. Okay. I want to ask you a question, Destin Cope. PlayStation has all these revenue streams. All these revenue streams. You know, games, peripherals, consoles, you know, subscriptions. What's their number one revenue stream? What is their biggest pie? You know, you got a pie, you cut out a slice, right? But there's this one slice that is huge out of the pie. It is the biggest slice you'll get. This is the, this is, this is the pie. Of, this is the slice of all slices. You understand what I'm saying? Which slice is that? If you said software sells, right, you're wrong. It's money transactions. PlayStation's biggest revenue generator by a metric ton is money transactions. And as you can see, Sony doesn't have a lot of games that are money transaction heavy. You know, they got Gran Turismo 7 and MLB The Show. 
you know, that's it. And this is even before Destiny, they acquired Bungie, long before that. So you can't even attribute Bungie to that when they acquired them. No, this is from the 30% cut they get from all the free to plays in any game that has some level of money transactions. The amount of content that is on PlayStation, primarily from third party, Sony makes tremendous revenue from the money transactions in that 30% cut. It is absolutely huge. That's why they made a big deal about Call of Duty. But it's just not Call of Duty. It's also Genshin Impact, Apex Legend. Their number one out of every game is Fortnite. That's their number one money transaction revenue game out of 30%, more than Call of Duty. So all of those games and everything, and even the single players that have expansion packs like The Witcher, just money transactions, expansion packs, all that stuff is absolutely huge to the PlayStation platform. That is their biggest revenue. So now, consoles aren't important. It's about the games. So reconcile this point. Help me resolve this point. If Sony gets rid of their console because it's not important, how do they continue to keep that 30% for money transactions? And I'll give you a, a scenario where it's a challenge. You can't say PC because or cloud gaming because Epic provides that exclusively to themselves. The mobile market, the cloud market, and the PC market, it is exclusive to Epic. They have the Epic Game Store and they will provide cloud gaming on Fortnite and all that stuff. So how does Sony continue to make money off of Fortnite without a console? How do they continue to make money off of the other games without a console? Think of all the third party games that are bought on PlayStation. Without the PlayStation console, if everyone migrates over to PC because there is no PlayStation console, Steam will be grabbing the lion's share of all those third party games, all those free to plays, money transactions, with the few that are exclusive, such as Fortnite, Epic Game Store is gonna get all that. How does Sony maintain a hold on their number one, number one, Destin, revenue stream? Oh, you don't have an answer. Because once again, you're more concerned about talking to your audience on what they want instead of providing to your audience the information that they need. Sony, the PlayStation platform, the console, that console is not a machine just for first party. In fact, I would say the actual mission, the actual point of them making a console is because of all the other revenue streams that they make. The subscriptions, the third party sales, the money transactions, right? And then also you got the peripherals and all that stuff. But all of that is why they make a console. Because if it was just about first party and that's it, then why the hell are you wasting time with a console? You could just be EA, make your games and then put it on other platforms, like it's whatever. But they have a console for a reason. It's because they gain access to revenue streams that not even like take two. You ever notice how you have some of the biggest publishers out there, Activision, when they were third party, right? Take two, EA, yet they never made the money PlayStation made holistically. Why? Because they don't have access to that level of revenue that platform has. Did you notice how Valve is more successful when they're not making games? They're the most successful they ever been, and they don't even make games. I think Half Life Alex was like the last one, but they don't really produce games no more. So, how the hell? So, they're so goddamn successful. How are they making more money than they ever did? It's because they have a platform called Steam and they are making money off of everybody else. Everybody who makes games, put it on Steam, Valve gets that 30% cut. The free to plays, all that stuff, make that money. That's the point of having a platform to gain access to all those huge revenue streams. So now we got to ask the real question. If the point of the console is to gain all these revenue streams, then why is Xbox moving away from the console? And this is where you have to admit that you're an alcoholic. Can you admit you're an alcoholic? Are you ready to admit you're an alcoholic? Are you ready to admit that that strategy of console where you actually create it for the subscription, for the third party sales, for that cut of money transactions is simply not good enough. Microsoft is simply not getting those numbers. And if you're not getting those numbers and those revenue streams, then the console's not doing its job. 
Are you guys ready to admit you're alcoholics? The portal that you use to play the game is becoming less and less important. And especially when you start diving into the, the revenue for these big companies, because that's their bottom line, literally. Right? Yeah, people don't like it when I say, when we get into the 2030s, consoles may be as important to us as our favorite DVD player, CD player. And I know it's kind of a hard thing to accept, but I really shifted my discussion about video games and my channel about the studios and the games. And I still make console or hardware related videos, but over the years, like I've watched the console not sell well for Xbox. I've watched them not support it properly. Uh, they promised things they didn't deliver. And then I look at the PlayStation 5 just basically running 1080p and 1440p in the new generation. And I wonder, you know, where are the legs for things like this? And so I, I've changed my attitude probably in early 2021. In 2021, while you're still advocating for exclusives in 2023, and you're still fighting the whole idea of Xbox going third party as 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 as, as late as of what? November? Remember the Jazz Corden article when he interviewed Phil Spencer? Oh, no, no, Game Pass is not going to be. And you all cheered. Ha! PlayStation content crazy. They know what they're talking about. Third party. No, it's only ABK deal. You were doing that in 2023. So what the hell are you talking about? You're in launch where these pieces of plastic have become less important than watching Xbox lose like $100 per unit. Uh, yeah, they don't want to use that as like their big thing to lean on. Yeah, I've talked about the ecosystem for a long time because that's what Phil Spencer has been talking about and that's what Microsoft has been talking about for a long time. PlayStation's been copying a lot of what Xbox has been doing. You know, they were the first to do cloud streaming and then they kind of abandoned it for a while and then they realized, oh, Xbox is doing it. Let's bring this back and rebrand PlayStation now as PlayStation. Oh my God, bro. It's like I said. They consistently find a way to make the end result of how can we make Xbox look good. Like, y'all gotta stop that. Let that shit go. You are not responsible to make Xbox look good. It's killing you. So now, he says, obviously he admits, PlayStation did cloud first. They draw him back. But now he's trying to say, because Xbox doing it, Xbox pulled PlayStation in. Well, let me ask you this. If PlayStation came back to cloud only because of Xbox, then how are they far ahead in the technology? Because you can actually run 4K games with cloud on PlayStation. You still can't do that on Xbox. Microsoft still has not provided the capability to cloud stream 4K game in games of 4K. Now, I don't want to hear the argument from anybody, well, you don't need that. It's not about the need. It's about the capability and how more advancements they are doing with the capability. How did PlayStation get ahead of Microsoft if they just shut it down completely and the only reason why they came back was because they looked at Microsoft and they're like, oh, okay, we got to start again and then leapfrog them into having 4K cloud streaming capability. Please riddle me that. Well, the answer is, it's not because they stopped it. They never stopped it. They slowed it down because they understand the challenges. Remember, Sony, for the most part, really is about quality. They really want the quality of their products. Microsoft rushed cloud, in my opinion. They rushed it. They put it out there and they try to make it seem like it's a viable option to use if you don't want the console or in fact, not only that, they outright said you don't need the console. Don't get it. We got cloud way ahead of schedule when the system is not nowhere near at the stage to replace the console. Sony didn't do that, right? Because cloud was not at the forefront of their strategy. The console is, they still always worked on cloud strategy. They bought Gaikai. They realized that it happened. They have contracts with other cloud providers beyond Azure. They took steps to try to make the service right better, but not replace the console. But once again, the, the result for you guys always has to end in, did we make Xbox look good? Did we say the things people want to hear to make Xbox look good? And that's just a bad, you gotta stop that. Plus, and they kind of bundled it all together in a much better way to compete with Game Pass. And that's the thing that I like to see. I like to see these companies pushing each other to 
but but is Sony really trying to compete with Game Pass? Now you can argue because of the similarities of the service, like the similarities of the service. You know they, you know, what you would call it. You know, you get a bunch of games um, for low cost. But the thing is, PS Now was already doing that. PS Now had a bunch of games that you could play for low cost, right? And you were able to. They implemented at a certain point direct download. It wasn't just exclusive to streaming. The problem is was just the naming convention. All they did was just renamed it into one service. But here's the thing. If they really wanted to compete with Game Pass, don't you think the number one thing to try to compete with Game Pass is day and day games? And Sony's not doing that. Another thing, don't you think that PlayStation should or would, I ain't gonna say should, but don't you think they would have put the PS Plus Extra and Premium at the forefront of this strategy? Because Game Pass is at the forefront of strategy it's at the shows it's like literally the main deal we just had a state of play and playstation doesn't do that they don't do ps plus extra and premium at the forefront of their strategy at best you get like tweets of what games are coming to playstation extra stuff it's not really like when you look at something that playstation does only does in terms of advertisement or you know a showcase or a state of play the subscription service barely ever gets mentioned if it does at all so i don't really see it that way their services like i would love it if xbox got their game dvr in a much better situation because the playstation game dvr was phenomenal it just works really well it captures in 4k up to an hour like it's really really solid and i'm very surprised xbox just has done nothing with that technology um and I am happy to see them still pushing each other, but it seems like they're pushing each other right now towards uh, larger scale games that everybody can play together. And I think that does mean that we are going to see fewer and fewer exclusives. Now, within the community, I have seen a lot of turmoil. And I'm wondering the. Do so I'm going to skip I'm going to skip ahead of this because now they get into the emotional reaction of the community. Yeah, I know some of you would love to see that, but I'm like, man, I'm not interested in that nonsense. I'll be honest. You know, I'm not going to cater. Once again, in fact, it's funny how they bring that up. Once again, it's all about catering to emotions. Now, nah, we're moving on from that nonsense. So, I time stamp to the next segment. Reach saturation within the Xbox ecosystem, so why not make a little bit more money? It's like when Ori finally came to the Switch, I don't think anybody was, like, upset about that. They seem fine if it comes mm -hmm. to the Switch. But it's when it comes to the PlayStation that it's a big deal. And I, right. I made a list. I, I don't I keep I feel like I'm a broken record because I just did a, a a little bit of a different thing where I had made a list of all the games that are coming to other platforms from PlayStation. And they include games like Death Stranding eventually came to Xbox. MLB So this is hilarious. Death Stranding didn't come to Xbox. It came to PC. Xbox gamers cannot play the stranding now of course you guys want to convince yourself that oh yeah xbox gamers can because xbox pc um to the xbox console gamers can they play no which goes back to this whole ecosystem how are you an ecosystem when the ecosystem don't have access to all the games explain that concept to me I don't understand. So if I have an Xbox console and I can't play a game in the Xbox ecosystem, is my console really part of that ecosystem? The concept is weird. And you guys never challenge that because once again, that is something the community needs to hear. You guys need to ask, is Xbox really a true ecosystem? That's a conversation needed. But you're not going to talk about what's needed. You're going to talk about what they want to hear. And your Xbox community don't want to hear any bashing or criticism of the Xbox ecosystem. Even though PC gamers get to play Death Stranding. And what's even a slap in the face, they get it on their PC Game Pass. While you Xbox gamers with Xbox Game Pass don't get a big AAA title from Kojima. So are you really an ecosystem? the show is about to come to xbox game pass we have uh C what do you mean about it's been on xbox game pass 
Once the relicensing negotiation happened, clear MLB wants their game everywhere. And that's understandable. MLB doesn't care about this console war. They want to be like NBA. They want to be like NFL, FIFA, whatever. In fact, for a while, M MLB was really the only professional sports organization that was only on one platform. They had a game on one platform. Everybody else was multi-platform. NFL, NHL, FIFA, hell, even WWE wrestling. Um, what's the FIA racing? Like, think of any sports organization all around the world, from tennis to golf, PGA. MLB was literally one of the largest sports organizations that was still on one platform, and they obviously don't want that. And Sony had a choice. Do what the MLB wants, or if they say, nah, we're not making games for Xbox, then they will lose the license and thus crushing San Diego Studios, who was designed for that. So, not really a good case. Which was originally an exclusive that came to Xbox. We have Stray that was originally exclusive that eventually came to Xbox. That's third party. Xbox. So, like, it's not like okay. the inverse isn't true. PlayStation doesn't own those studios. That that that's a key word, Destin. So you know you know what's funny, Destin? You you like you like you know the difference. Like you just like they don't own the studios. Like bro, use that use that fact to help you formulate. But you once again you're stuck with. But I have to say something that makes Xbox look good. Like bro, that that is killing you. Per se. It's killing your critical faculties, man. It just like let try stop trying to make Xbox look good. Destin, stop. Use factual information, piece it together. I'm gonna help you. Watch. I'm gonna show you how you guys are just so off the mark. I I don't know the situation. MLB the show is like a little bit of an interesting situation, but yeah. the point I'm making is those Marathon exclusives. And still come to other platforms destiny is still coming marathon still coming We're and again bungie and sony made a deal for the acquisition but there was terms bungie still had to have the ability to be a multi-plat dev so we already knew marathon was coming their next game and every game bungie makes is going to come to more platforms right multi-platform that was the deal if sony didn't agree bungie would have said sorry then Hallelujah. You know, adios. What Sony wanted from Bungie, and I'm sure Sony's enjoying the money, and there's probably financial troubles, but Sony really needed help with their gas strategy. They didn't really have the people or the knowledge to do it. Let's, let's, can we all admit that? Without Bungie, Sony doesn't really have it. They never really had it. And we're already hearing some good fruits of that label. We're finally hearing some fruits of the acquisition because apparently Bungie really helped Arrowhead Studios with the Helldiver strategy. And you see, and you can see, technically, as I was playing the game, there is some Destiny aesthetics. The gunplay, like there's certain things. If you played Destiny for a long time, you know there's something in there. So you know there's some Bungie influence to that. And if Bungie is able to do that with every studio, give them that little something to make the game just generally good and successful, that's more than trying to make Marathon exclusive to, to um, Xbox. Especially if all these gas games, if they do end up successful, you can only play on PlayStation. Obviously, it's going to be on PC, so it's a split between PC and PlayStation. Come on, bro. We're seeing a shift in how these companies do business. And the, the, a lot of the games I'm listing, they're not the Starfields. They're not the Indiana Jones. They're not the Spider-Mans. They're not the Last of Us, right? But they are games that were once exclusive to an ecosystem that have finally come to Xbox. Now, if Square Enix could get their stuff together. So, so Stray, Death Stranding, you know, third-party stuff is a shift. Really, Dustin. It's, it's a shift. So Grand Theft Auto 3, when it went to Xbox, OG Xbox, Vice City. You don't remember that happening? You don't remember San Andreas was on Xbox? No? You know, that, that didn't happen? Um, do you remember Bioshock? It was a 360 exclusive, but then it went to PlayStation 3. No? Um, remember Oblivion? Um, yeah, that was a... 2006 Xbox 360 exclusive, but it went to PlayStation 3. Yeah, Devil May Cry, day one on 
Xbox, no. Yeah, Final Fantasy 13. No, you don't remember that. Mm, you don't you don't remember a lot of games that were timed exclusives going to other platforms. So, yeah. Don't remember any of that. You know. I'm sorry if I sound insulting, but you you are trying to literally redefine or trying to make timed exclusives from third party going to platform like if it's a new thing. Like what what? You literally we've been seeing that for decades. Remember um what it was that um Capcom game? Um with the zombies. Oh I've completely forgot the name because to me overall the the franchise ain't that great. Um uh, but the zombie game that Xbox had. Oh my god, it's just gonna drive me nuts. It's gonna drive me nuts, right? That eventually went to PlayStation. Did it not? Time exclusive strategy from third party is re- is I ain't gonna say it's rare because I can't calculate the frequency, but it is not all that surprising that the deals with third party most likely or may result in just a time deal and not a permanent l- perpetual exclusive. You see what I'm saying? That's been happening going back to the PlayStation 2 generation and maybe even before that. So that's not a new thing. So saying Stray, Death Stranding, you know, and other multi games that were PlayStation exclusives now going to Xbox, that's been happened before. That happened already and vice versa. Doesn't, signif- doesn't signify the first party strategy. Final Fantasy games over on Xbox. They started with 14 this week. I, I think fans might might be a little bit... And remember, you know, it's funny, if Square Enix get their stuff together, wasn't Final Fantasy 15 day one on Xbox? As well as Final Fantasy 13? What happened? What happened? Got Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15 on Xbox, and that's on the Xbox One. Hmm... Maybe sales, maybe Sony's money hatting, things like that. But again, we, we got to separate third party strategy and first party strategy. I think you guys are blurring the lines. First party strategy with a console has a lot more revenue cons- considerations versus a third party that their only consideration is the specific games that they make. It's not the same. But like, okay, maybe this isn't so bad. How do you feel about that? I mean, that that's going to happen. I don't way. know how long it takes them, right? Yeah, well, to get, I agree. Yeah, how do you? I think they have to finish that trilogy up, and then uh, a year after the trilogy. That's what I've been telling people. I assume a year after the Final Fantasy VII trilogy remaster set is done, a year later it'll just drop on Xbox with no fanfare, and that's just kind of how it is. Which is absolutely true, but the damage is done because we're just about to get the sequel, and it's twenty twenty four. So let's do this. Let's do a little basic math. The remake came out in 2020. The sequel came out in 2024. So with that same time frame, let's assume the next one is 2028. And then a year later, somehow they're able to port. I doubt they'll be able to port all three. They'll probably just the first one. So 2029, you'll get Final Fantasy remake on Xbox. And it won't even be really this xbox unless they do cross gen no one's gonna really care or wait for that but i, I want to ask you a question yeah. like how are you feeling about uh the big star or the flagship titles for xbox how many of those or how a portion what portion of those are going to remain exclusive for a while that's like one of the big questions that xbox fans are really concerned about it's like okay we know starfield could possibly come to ps5 in a year or at the end of the year, and Phil didn't lie because he, he said, oh, they asked, are these four games, are, are, is Starfield and Indiana Jones part of those? And he says, no, they're not. And he could totally say that holds up in court and they can put it later. So my question is to you, how many of those big games do you think will remain exclusive? I'll turn it that way. I don't know. Sean Murray told me that No Man's Sky would never come to Xbox and then No Man's Sky Next came to Xbox and that they were on the stage announcing that property. But I don't think Starfield, I don't think Indiana Jones are going to come to the PlayStation 5. <clears throat> At least not in the immediate future. I think those games will do very well in Indiana Jones' case. And Starfield has seemed to have done 
very well for Xbox. They seem happy with mm-hmm. sales. So uh, I don't know that there's really a particular reason why they would do that in the immediate future. I don't think. All right. So once again, you're always concerned about the result, right? Make Xbox look good. Here's, 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 let me help you guide you into this conversation. All right. I'm going to help you guide you. Okay. You don't feel that these games are going to come to PlayStation. Maybe at least not in the immediate future. Who knows? Maybe 10 years, whatever. It's very ambiguous, right? It's like you almost don't want to commit. But I'm going I'm to commit it for you. So you don't feel the decision was already made. Let's, we could at least say that. By you saying this, I think we, could, I think we could agree that right now at this point, you don't think Microsoft made a commitment to decide what happened. I'm going to tell you the decision is already done. Cole, the answer is yes. These games are coming. Now, when they're coming... Again, like I said earlier, it's about resource management, management of properties, management of people, you know, um, getting that. But all of it's coming. Avowed all of it. Now, I, in fact, I'll use Avowed as a great subject case. Obsidian is a small studio. So Avowed may not come to PlayStation for a long time because Xbox and the figures might decide, hey, make Avowed. But we don't want you to put time into porting about on PlayStation. We want you to work on the next project because you're a small studio. You need the time to make the next project. We'll try to figure out a way using contract work or another studio that that specializes in porting games to PlayStation 5. We'll see who we can find out there to port about. So Obsidian may not be the ones to port about. They're going to move on to the next project. Microsoft Publishing will try to figure out what to do with Avowed on PlayStation, if they can, who's available, see how it's done. You see the logic? So Avowed might not come to PlayStation or it might take a while, not because they don't want it, it's because of resource management. You know, if they feel, no, we got to have Obsidian start working on the next new game because they're a small studio, we don't want to stop that studio, you know, doing what they're doing because of a port. We'll figure out who can properly port Avowed later on. That's how decisions are being made not well we're just gonna keep it to keep it okay but if your idea right now is thinking what game microsoft should just keep because that's not as you said all the cells are good enough you need to explain the business logic behind that so microsoft has made the decision to put like sea of thieves hi-fi rush grounded um and what's the other game pentiment right they decided to put those games on PlayStation Nintendo to give those games the opportunity to be more successful. Will you see a Thieves by itself? Sea of Thieves is probably one of the more successful gas games for Xbox, right? Arguably, right? Very successful for Rare. Now they get the opportunity to be more successful. So please explain to me the business sense of not giving the opportunity of Starfield to be more successful. Why are they going to stunt Starfield's growth? Because right now, that's it. You got all you got. Whatever you got from Starfield is all you got. You're not getting any more. You know, there's no more to get. There's no more people to buy the game. It's done. It's not going to exponentially grow Game Pass in the future. It's done. It's just there. So Microsoft's willing to make the decision to further the success of Sea of Thieves, right? Grounded. But you think they're not sure on whether they want to grow the success of Starfield or I'll even throw in Forza, Halo Infinite. I'll even throw those games. They're not interested in furthering the growth of those games. Okay, fine. Let's say they're not interested in furthering the growth. Give me the business reason why they're not interested. If they're not interested in making those games more successful, why? Why are they keeping those games exclusives? What's the business goal? I would love it if you try to say console sales. Please say console sales. Because that's a whole new video I'll be able to make. I dare you say console sales. I, I dare you. I'll, hell, I'll go in your channel and give you a $10 super chat. If you please say console sales and you make your video on the console selling strategy. Please. Please. I beg you. Let that be your answer. Please. I'm saying, please, Colt, you two, one of you, please make a video on saying that the business sense is trying to sell consoles. Oh, my God. 
the content I will create of your video would be immaculate. Starfield is imminent. I think Starfield would be with like with a definitive edition, just like they did in the 360 era with, uh, well, it wasn't a definitive edition, sorry, but Bioshock and Mass Effect eventually came to the PlayStation 3 later in the, the life of that console. And I think that's the situation we would be. What does Bioshock and Mass Effect have to do with this? Like you guys are, don't, those games are third party. Like you guys don't, you guys are so invested in trying to make Xbox look good. You're confusing arguments and points. Bioshock was coming to PlayStation and Xbox had no choice unless Xbox would have paid for full exclusivity. They didn't do that. They paid for timed, you know, and Mass Effect, Bioware got bought out by EA. So that has nothing to do with Xbox, right? In fact, the original Mass Effect publishing was still locked. EA was able to circumvent that by creating like the trilogy edition, stuff like that. And that's how they were able to get the game on PlayStation. But it had nothing to do with Xbox decision making. It has nothing to do with them. So I don't even know why you brought those games up. They don't relate. And with Starfield, because we still have all the expansions for Starfield that are going to be releasing, including, I believe it's Shattered Space. And Indiana mm -hmm. Jones hasn't even come out yet. And so, you know, it's funny because once again, you partially have the answer. If you want to, if your original argument was Starfield's not being made anytime soon because they're too busy making the expansions, that's a great reason. He's saying, you know, if the argument should be, I think Starfield's going to come, but we're probably not going to see anytime soon because they're too busy with the expansions and who knows how deep into the production line. They probably don't want to cut the manpower. They want that expansion out. After the expansion, maybe they start working on the port or whatever. That's beautiful. See, that's what people need to hear. That's how you get things done. But you didn't do that. There's no indication that that is going to come to PlayStation 5. The FTC documents prove as much because there were high-level business meetings about making that game exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem. So <clears throat> yeah. I, I don't see a world where that's coming. Unless Again, you don't see a world that's coming, so please explain Microsoft wanting other first party IPs to be more successful while holding back other first party IPs from being more successful. So they don't want Indiana Jones to be more successful. They don't want Starfield to be more successful playing to you, but they want CFDs to be more successful. And you can't say, well, it's a uh, games as a service. Then explain Pentiment and Hi-Fi Rush. Those games aren't games as a service. So they want those games to have the opportunity to be more successful after they're due on Xbox, but Microsoft's not interested in doing the same for Indiana Jones and Starfield and whatever. Just, just explain from a business sense and please let it be console sales. Unless PlayStation starts to play nice and release some of their AAAs on Xbox. And then I think a lot of people who have their identity tied to the plastic box are going right. to be like feeling really uneasy. I think that's what we're seeing. I, Colt, honestly, to answer your question, I think we're seeing a shift and how all these companies do business. And I think it's gonna it's a lot different for a lot of people who have been used to the console from the Intellivision ColecoVision days. Because that's how long we've been doing oh, this. Oh yeah. Now. It's been like this since before I was born. That's how long the console has existed. And Well, you you and I grew up in an era when uh, this gray box couldn't play the black box's games. Yeah. The cartridges didn't fit in there. And then we moved into CDs where you'd have the identical looking CD and it wouldn't play in the competitor's box. So we've grown up with this being accustomed to these games are unique to this platform. But some of the games you mentioned, like Bioshock and Mass Effect, are not first-party titles. They're not first-party right. studios. So you can bring Sifu or uh, Final Fantasy games or even Death Stranding could eventually come to Xbox. I don't think Death Stranding will come to the Xbox console because the IP belongs Xbox. to PlayStation. You know what I'm Death Stranding is on Xbox. It's on Xbox Game Pass, right? Or it was. Yeah. It's not on Xbox. I, play, I played Death Stranding on my Xbox. <laughs> These guys are confused on what games is on their preferred platform. They don't know what games is available. Especially a game... I can understand if it's a niche game. This is Death Stranding. They're not sure right now. Right now, these guys are confused on whether or not 
Death Stranding is on the Xbox console. Let's see how this shit plays out. <laughs> I totally, I mean, I played it when it came out on it was uh, a big deal. PC Game Pass. I don't even remember that. Let me, let me make sure it was on console. Holy shit, we are witnessing. I have no memory of that, but yeah. They're not sure. But I mean, it, it, it being on PC Game Pass, it basically puts it on Xbox. Can be played on Xbox. It's on the console. Xbox platform. It is That's, PC. Um, All right. Oh yeah. my God, they had to Google that. They had to Google whether or not Death Stranding can be played on the Xbox console. And the crazy part is, this doesn't ignite a conversation of, wait a minute. If I have to Google on whether a game is on Xbox console or not, then we should have the discussion on this whole strategy of Xbox ecosystem. That would, that would ignite the fire, but they're not. You won't see that conversation. They will not have that conversation on whether Microsoft is holding true to the term Xbox ecosystem. Because why speak on what gamers need to hear when you can talk about what they want to hear? Yeah, I mean, it, you're, but you are right. It basically is an Xbox uh, release at that point, just not on console. But he, <laughs> Cole just said, it's basically an xbox release just not on console in other words it's an xbox release but not for xbox gamers box so the people with the box cannot play the game so how is it a xbox release yo this shit is wild they're not even he didn't even try to advocate for you xbox console gamers he says yeah xbox released it but you can't play it. Again, ignite the conversation what people need to hear. Is Microsoft truly creating an Xbox ecosystem? Uh, when, you, when we talk about that plastic that people have that allegiance to, I know I said that Xbox probably loses $100 per unit on the series consoles as a whole, but I think PlayStation was making money on the PS5 Maybe right now, Hiroki Totoki is complaining because that margin of money they make on the PS5 has shrunk so much that they're looking at bringing their games to PC sooner or day and date, and it's going to make up where they're not making money on the plastic. You think that's possible? Well, I mean, they just want more money, period. Right. Like, that's, that's the story. They had to raise their console prices everywhere in the world. That's unprecedented. So did Xbox, Xbox everywhere in the world, yeah. except for the United States, I think they kept it the same, but everywhere the console prices went up. So we're in a really weird territory where the boxes aren't making a ton of money for X or losing money for Xbox. They're making a little bit of money for PlayStation, but the money's always been in software. So like, is PlayStation going to make Destiny exclusive? No way. They make too much money off of the the PC user base and the Xbox user base. I think what PlayStation is doing is saying, man, Xbox has been day and date on PC for a long time and they make a lot of money through that. Sure. So the argument about day and day of PC, I'm not saying it's off the table, but if Microsoft made that much money off a of day and day PC, why are they putting their games on PlayStation? Given the look of things, the optics of the brand. I don't understand. This is this is this is a conversation on the whole new we've got to have. If PC generate that much money, then why is Xbox putting games on PlayStation, Nintendo? Now the answer could be, oh, they just make more money, but you're doing it at potentially losing revenue in other areas. Again, these guys only strictly talking about hardware revenue sales and first party revenue sales. As I said before, the number one revenue for PlayStation is money transactions and that's primarily from third party and what about the third party game sales the console is more than just a machine that sells first party games in fact the third party is more important than the first party in terms of revenue that's where the majority of the money is again you combine you combine money transactions subscription and third party sales that completely obliterates first party sales on the playstation platform completely obliterates it not even close. There's no, every single first party game could sell 20 plus million and will not even come close to the combined mind of subscription, money transaction, third party sales.
that ain't close it's not even close that's what the console does that's literally the point of the console if it was just strictly first party revenue and not about and everything else is ignored or don't even bother then there's really no point in making a console you would be like the other third party platform holders where their revenue is strictly reliant on the games they make and no other revenue streams but you guys ain't tying that up tying that up why because if you did tie that conversation then people will be like, wait a minute. If only the console brings all these revenue streams and Microsoft's willing to make their console not look as appealing, does that mean they're not doing a good job with money transaction revenue, with subscription revenue, and third party sales? And that's why the whole console thing's not working? And the answer would be yes. This is where I need you guys to admit you're alcoholics, but you're avoiding it. Just admit it, you're alcoholics. Console strategy is failing for Microsoft across the board. So they're not getting the metrics of money transactions, third-party sales, and subscription. It's not happening. So they got to move on from that console-centric strategy and, and just find new forms of revenue in absence of what the console is supposed to do. 3% cut. As we see more and more Activision titles go to the, the Steam platform. But at the end of the day... Uh, that's a lot of money on the table that we're missing out on. And while the console is cool, Fortnite is eating our lunch. And Fortnite is not tied to one specific plastic right. box. It's on everything. It's on cell phones. It's on PCs. It could probably yeah, Fortnite's not eating anybody's lunch. In fact, that's one of the biggest revenue drivers for PlayStation. PlayStation is not going to lose Fortnite money. And if they don't have a console, they lost Fortnite. I explained earlier. They got to have the console because the only way to make Fortnite money is to actually have people play Fortnite on the PlayStation console. No console, no Fortnite money, no transaction revenue, all of it gone. The biggest pie of PlayStation is gone. And you guys ain't addressing that. A fridge. And I think PlayStation wants some of that. Xbox wants some of that. So they're kind of looking at a lot of these flagship titles that we all adore, like uh, the Last of Us franchise, Uncharted, and they're just... You could do that, you know what I'm saying? But again, I don't know why you're mixing Microsoft and PlayStation trying together. That's not the same. Remember, the house is on fire for Xbox, while the next neighbor's house, PlayStation, they got a flooded basement. Now they got to call a plumber to drain it out. That's not the same as a fire. You're not going to call the fire department on PlayStation a plumber on Xbox. Two totally different problems, two totally different solutions. Stop combining the two. PlayStation problems, not Microsoft problems. Microsoft problem is they can't get the console, sell enough, or reach the audience to gain those extra revenues, those primary revenues of subscription, money transaction, third-party sales. That's the whole point of the console. The whole point of the console is not to find a way to sell first party. You don't need a console so first party. You could just get rid of the console, make your first party game, and put it on every device. There you go. Your first party sells. But then again, you wouldn't be first party. You would be third party. Notice EA sells lots of games, and Rockstar sells lots of games, and Ubisoft, and Capcom. They, don't, they didn't create their own console. And the reason why they didn't do it, because they're not trying to fight for the subscription revenue. They're not trying to fight for third party revenue. They're not trying to fight for money transaction revenue. But PlayStation is. That's what the console does. Those are the revenue streams you have to consider. Especially, once again, knock on, you know, I'm trying to make a point here. The number one revenue for PlayStation is money transactions. So please formulate your thoughts on that. Please. Uncharted, for example, or Last of Us Factions is a better example, sorry almost was a multiplayer game and, and naughty dog's like no we're not going to go that route we're going to stick mm -hmm. with what we know and thank I, god I'm glad to hear that so Me i think too. exclusive will still exist but i do think day and date on pc is coming for playstation and we'll see what ends up happen, having happening with the consoles which i think will be a less big focus less of a focus for these companies in, in the coming years yeah um you're interviewing me though i had no, for PlayStation, consoles are a huge strategy. Again, think of the other revenue streams that PlayStation is dominating in. 
they got to maintain that revenue. They got to maintain those strategies. They got to maintain those pipelines. Microsoft just don't have those pipelines. Xbox is not producing the third-party revenue pipeline, the money transaction pipeline, the subscription service pipeline. It's just not there. It's just not big enough. PlayStation is huge. Of course, PlayStation wants more, but they're not going to sacrifice, oh, let's get extra first-party sales. They will completely neglect money transaction, third-party revenue, and all these other stuff. They got to balance that out, and they will balance that out. But that's their own strategy to figure out. Microsoft has a completely different strategy because they don't have the revenue streams of those things that the console provides. About the consoles. <laughs> this is what happens when you get two, two people in here who are used to We're running their own there. shows. Yeah. Well, on, on the console front, I'm sorry, back to you, Destin. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up a few times. I find it interesting that we have the PS5 Pro, the Switch right. 2... So this is where um, I end their video and stuff like that, right? Because then now they're talking about hardware and that's whatever. The part I want to discuss is what I discussed. And wow, this video is already an hour and 20 minutes. I apologize. Um, of course, I'll add timestamps to make it more palatable. But I think it all flowed. I think it'll be worth to watch the whole video. You can watch it in bits and stuff. But ultimately, I think ultimately these guys haven't learned. I don't think they learned anything at all. I'm not saying that they're dumb on trying their intelligence but i think they're just they're just too grounded too they got their 10 toes down on how we can have a conversation that makes xbox or how we can make xbox or microsoft decision in a positive light and they're so grounded on that that they twist everything that's happening here's the here's the here's the the summary or whatever number one Xbox problem is not PlayStation problem. This is not an industry problem. It is not. Absolutely not. What Microsoft is going through is simply a symptom or result of the Xbox console strategy not being successful. That's it. Period. Point blank. They got to have a totally different strategy. This is not an industry level strategy, whatever. Because when you think about it, industry level strategy, there's only three console makers. EA, Ubisoft, Capcom, everybody's a multi-plat industry anyway. So really, when we say industry strategy, we're talking about three console makers because they're the only ones that are not bonafide third party. Well, at least there's two left that are not bonafide third party or full third party, right? We're only talking about three companies. Everybody else puts games everywhere. So it's not an industry thing. It's just platform provider things. And Microsoft, because they're the weakest of the bunch, you know, they're the, they're the animal that's in the back of the pack and the lions got to them and they're eating the shit out of it, right? That's Xbox. It's a failed strategy. The strategy was not successful. They were unable to gain the market share they needed. They can't get the lion's share of third-party sales. They're not getting the lion's shares of money transactions and the social screens has flattened. So everything that really truly brings the, the successful business metric of consoles, Xbox has failed across the board. So they have to do a totally different strategy and their totally different strategy is being a third party publisher that also has a console, right? And the future of that console is going to be powered by Game Pass. It is going to be a Game Pass driven device. The days of having the most powerful hardware going toe to toe with PlayStation, those days are over. If you want an Xbox console, it's because you want Game Pass. So really Game Pass is the main thing of Xbox fully. And now it's all about how you want to play Game Pass. Do you want to play Game Pass on PC? Do you want to play Game Pass on cloud? Or do you want to play Game Pass on a console? But make no mistake, it's Game Pass. That's it. That's your exclusive as a community for Xbox. How do you want to play Game Pass? Pick a device. If Game Pass is not your main goal, and your main goal is about the games and how many games you can play on devices, then at that point, it really comes down to PC and PlayStation, maybe Nintendo, if you're a huge Nintendo fan, whatever. That's a whole different conversation. So really, it's about the communities of, they don't really care how they get their games, meaning they don't really care if it's through subscription or if they have to buy it all. They just want the platforms that has all the biggest games and they're not going to miss out. You're already seeing Xbox gamers like, Xbox is missing out on Final Fantasy Rebirth. It's missing out on Helldivers. He says, I could just get a PlayStation and people who are trying to slam those gamers say, oh, so you're going to pay $70 for games? And they're like, it's not really about Game Pass and how much I pay for games. It's just getting access to games. And right now, Xbox is not getting access to Final Fantasy, to Rise of Ronin and all this stuff, right? And who knows what other 
um, third party games are going to miss out on. And some games are just tired of that. And Game Pass doesn't fulfill that need. Sure, Game Pass really fulfills the need of not spending a lot of money. But it comes at the cost of you get what you get. Whatever Game Pass provides is what Game Pass provides and you're stuck with it. That's it. That's that's what you got to deal with. And if you're good with that, then you're good with that. But... If you don't want to miss out on third-party titles, you don't want to miss out on Rise of Ronin, you don't want to miss out on Final Fantasy Rebirth, or you're concerned about, man, how many more games can PlayStation keep? Death Stranding 2 is coming out. Kojima's new action espionage is coming out. You know, it's already been mentioned. And you're like, man, these games are just not going to come to Xbox. And you're not really concerned about if a game costs $70 or if you get a subscription. If that's not your thing, then Xbox is not going to be the place for you. But if your thing is Game Pass and you just enjoy all these library of games that's already there and whatever new library comes on day and date from first party, then something on Xbox will appeal to you, whether it's PC, console, or whatever. And that's the reality. But so far from seeing this, ultimately, it's a repeat of mistakes. Nobody's learning. And in the end, people... Or some people are just always going to stick to trying to have conversations on what people want to hear and not have the conversation on what people need to hear and bring up. But anyway, you let me know what you think. This is your only friend is U2 Streets, Porter Rock 77. Enjoy your weekend. Um, I'm going to hop on to some Hell Divers. Obviously, I'm going to finish up and clean up this thing, this video. But thinking Hell Divers of Grand Blue Fantasy is great. It's absolutely great. Great time to be a PlayStation gamer. Great time for gaming in general, but anyway, you guys take care. Have a good one. Peace. Grand opening, grand closing.